Sonic Fox made a tweet talking about the top five characters in Mortal Kombat 1, and it opened the floodgate. You're gonna see a lot of people talking about their personal tier list. I got early access to the game before the premium edition came out, so I actually have a lot of time spent on the game, and so things will probably change in the next few months, but I think this tier list is mostly accurate in terms of online combat league play. Of course, if we get a major patch to the game, I'll have to go and do this again with the new updates because in NetherRealm's history, anytime they do a big patch, things in the tier list shift around. I'm gonna start low tier and work my way up to top five or top one. Disclaimer, I think every single character in this game is viable and you could be first on the leaderboards with pretty much any pick. It's just gonna be harder with some characters than others. Starting off my B tier, I have General Xiao. I've gotta be honest, I don't see any Shaos. And the general consensus from everybody in the scene I've talked to is, yeah, you don't fight hardly any of them. Even worse, when you go into other social medias, you never see clips of this character. That's because he just doesn't have a lot of sauce. Also, his frames just aren't that great. He has nothing that, you know, brings him into the next level. He has to work really, really hard. And on top of that, he's not even the easiest character to learn because he has the two separate stances with and without the axe. I think some of his moves could be sped up and I know Mataro and him kind of have some synergy, but the two people I've seen playing it, they just had to work really hard. <laughs> like if you play any of the other characters, you're gonna have a way easier time. I think Xiao's moves look really cool, but he doesn't even get monster damage for having slower startups on some of his strings and no crazy mix-ups. So yeah, Xiao's gonna start off the bottom of my tier list in B. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and put Tanya in B. So Tanya's normals have great range. If you haven't played a Tanya yet, she can really space you out because she has really long reaching buttons. She also has a really great projectile. I think Tanya's projectile is really nice. It honestly just counters Baraka's projectile completely. So I think Tanya has some matchups where it works. Speaking of Baraka, Baraka is really good, but Tanya kind of can outspace him a lot. Problem is when she does open you up, she doesn't do a whole lot of damage and she kind of has to spam the same moves over and over again, hoping you just let go of block. Like when she mixes you up, she just doesn't get a lot for it. I'd say another thing about Tanya is she doesn't really have a cameo that I've seen so far that just makes her next level. There's gonna be some characters on this tier list that would be as low as Tanya, but cameos that they currently have just bring them into a new tier of their own. So I'm gonna have to stick with B. I also think the parry could be adjusted. The problem with the parry is if you throw out a cameo as well, it seems like Tanya's parry just gets eaten. Like <laughs> it's supposed to do things for you, but because of the cameo system, she still ends up getting hit. Also, I think Ashra accomplishes everything Tanya does, but better in a sense, and Ashra has plus frames. So yeah, I'm leaving Tanya in B for right now. This could change though. In B as well, I'm going to throw Katana in there. And I know that's gonna make some Katana mains mad, but hear me out. Katana is a really fun character to play and has some of the nastiest setups in the game with that ground trap. The problem I have with Katana is that I feel like she's very gimmicky. She'll go for these crazy pressure strings and you feel like it just never ends, but her chip damage really isn't that good. If you were just really patient against Katana, she will burn all her resources trying to, you know, run these pressure setups. And then, yeah, you have Baraka hitting you with a 50% combo. Katana can't break it, and yeah, she's lost everything. She would have been the worst character in the game if they didn't buff her before the full release. Like, Beta Katana was so bad. I know they buffed her down back one a good bit, and it is a lot better. You can combo a lot easier, and it just makes sense. Also, she also doesn't have a clear cameo. I know Goro works pretty well. I've seen Striker for the pressure. And the last character I will put in B tier is Natara. Now you might watch Natara gameplay and think this is the wildest, most cheap character you've ever seen in an MK game. And she looks like that, especially when you watch her combos. She gets insane damage and it looks like you have to be a robot to do all the things she's doing in the air. The problem is she has no true cameo that really opens her up past getting a lot of damage. Her move list is really, really short. She doesn't have that many strings. She doesn't have mix. So she has to strike throw and honestly, it becomes a hard time getting to the point where you can do these insane combos. On top of that, Natara doesn't have a good mid. So yeah, no mix up, no mid, not a lot of moves to use. Her button list is very short. So all that damage, but it is definitely hard to get to. This is actually where I would play Scorpion if Scorpion didn't have true cameos that elevated his play style. Natara doesn't really have a cameo that helps her at all get out of B tier. Scorpion deals with the same struggles. No mix up, no good mid, and you know, has a really short move list. He has to strike throw, 
but he has cameos that turn him into a very solid character. To start A tier, I'm gonna go ahead and put Reptile there. I think Reptile is a very good pick if you're learning the game. I think he can do almost anything. He has the YOLO slide, he has great combo damage, he has some light mix-ups, he has invisibility, even though, let's be real, the invisibility is not very good, and he can use a well-rounded list of cameos. So you're probably like, why isn't he A+. I think he's actually really easy to block, and once you've played the matchup a few times, you really know what's going on. Reptile is kind of like Smoke, where sometimes he just has to throw it out there and see what he can do. And so you can punish him a whole lot, and you know, he, he's just a very standard character. I actually think Reptile, out of all the characters in the game, aside from maybe Scorpion, is built the best to teach a new player how to do everything in the game and still get some great damage. So solid A is perfectly fine. Good Reptiles could win it all, but I just think, you know, there is some better characters with more extreme dirt. Next in A, I'm gonna be putting Smoke. And you might be like, wow, Diff, everybody online is using Smoke. I fight a thousand Smokes a day. And you're right, there are a whole ton of Smokes. I would bet Smoke is a top three most picked character online at the moment. Smoke and Reptile are like the exact same archetype, except Smoke is more risky, but also is better at these things. So Reptile, you get the mix-ups, but they're not that hard. Whereas Smoke, you get insane mix-ups, both overhead and low combo starters, but if they get blocked, Smoke is eating full combos. On top of that, Smoke's invisibility is 10 times better than Reptile's. Problem is, to get all these setups, you have to go for risky things. Smoke is such a risky character. That makes Smoke harder to play. I bet you if you're a new player, you can't get Smoke's canceled down. So I want to put him A alongside Reptile because I think they are essentially the same character, but Reptile got toned down in terms of mix and the invisibility, and Smoke got the better end of that, but they made him way more punishable and unsafe unless your execution is borderline perfect which can be hard in online connections. Next in A, I am putting Shang Tsung. That's because I don't know of any player that has mastered all 24 cast members. Because of the way Combat League currently works where you can't switch your main pick, you might go into a Combat League match where stealing souls doesn't even matter. You don't want to play the other character because you have no idea how to play them. And so I think Shang is actually hurt by the new system where you can't change the main, especially here at the beginning life cycle of the game. On top of that, Shang is pretty hard to play in my opinion, and his damage is okay, but it's not the greatest. He can get good damage for sure, but he just doesn't do enough, and I think he struggles in a lot of matchups because the game is still early. So this character could definitely climb up the tier list once we all have a mastery of all 24 characters. But at the moment, I've gone against so many Shanks that just have no idea what to do. Like when I'm playing Baraka, they just haven't used Baraka yet, so they get smashed because the base character definitely needs to steal your soul. Next in A, I'm gonna put Li Mei. I think Li Mei is a really just solid character. There's almost nothing special about her. There are cameos that allow her to combo off her amplified overhead, but it just costs a lot of meter for her and they tone down how many lanterns she can use in a combo. She's just very standard. I would honestly say she's like sub-zero, but with more damage, but she doesn't get ice clone. So I think she can win matches definitely, but she's super standard and you're just gonna have to strike throw a lot or be locked into a single cameo that allows you to, you know, get combos off the overhead. The problem is, if you do that, you lose the ability to mix up with Frost on those low strings where she goes for the overhead kick, because that's one of her better strings. Lee Mei, I think, could climb the list to A+, if they made a cameo that just fixed both of those problems at the same time. I just think for the first match of a Combat League set, you are going to be struggling one way or the other. So you're gonna have to see what your opponent is actually falling for and then probably go and switch cameos afterwards. Now let's go to A+. I'm gonna start A+, with Liu Kang. Liu Kang is weird, right? So in the stress test, everyone was calling Liu Kang cheap because his fireballs are really fast. He has one of the fastest mids in the game. It's a really, really good mid. And then come the beta, everybody like turned on Liu Kang because he didn't have mix which is just wild now that we have the full release and plenty of characters don't have mix. Liu Kang is definitely A plus solely for his mid and his practical damage. It doesn't matter what cameo he picks, Liu Kang is getting insane damage and he can zone as a base character. So you can kind of use the cameos for whatever you want. You can use it for setups, making unsafe things safe. He's a really free character by nature with his base kit 
He has really good strike throw. Again, the mid. He probably has a top three mid in the entire game, which is unreal. The only thing really holding him back from being any higher is the fact that you can flawless block a lot of the strings he wants to use very often for, you know, more pressure. So he's a solid pick. Some people are going to say he's boring, but now that we've seen the whole cast, I think, you know, mix-ups are hard to come by. And Liu Kang definitely does really well. 50% is light work for Liu Kang. Next in A+, I have Sub-Zero, and I know a lot of people are gonna want me to put Sub way lower. Uh, I don't think he's that bad. I don't think, I know they lowered his damage, but I feel like that's it. He just has less damage. He still has all the same tools. He has some of the best corner pressure in the entire game. He essentially counter zones by sitting behind his ice clone. I know there are some characters that can just teleport behind him, but yeah, unless you're running against what, Scorpion or maybe a couple others, you're gonna be fine. And if the opponent chooses somebody like Motaro to teleport behind you, I mean, yeah, that's the opponent though, probably sacrificing their best cameo to play Motaro. Subs forward one is still a really strong button. With cameos, he has a low and overhead combo starter. It's such a weird thing with sub because if they just turn back up his damage to like 50% three bar combos or 50% two bar combos, he would be again like top five, top seven. I just don't think the damage alone is making him any lower than A+. Again, sub has some of the best matchups in the game. I bet you some characters can hardly reach Sub-Zero. Next in A+, I am putting Kung Lao, and I've seen a lot of people complaining about his 18 frame overhead combo starter. And the reason people are complaining about that is if you played MK11, people didn't like Sub-Zero's 19 frame combo starter. And yes, that Sub-Zero starter in MK11 was cheap, don't get me wrong, but the difference between that and this game is Kung Lao doesn't have a good low starter, whereas Sub-Zero had a fast low starter as well. I would say out of all the characters I've watched and played, Kung Lao's probably the least, so I'd recommend checking out somebody like Foxy Grant or just a Kung Lao player. This one I know is A plus for sure. He's really good in the clips I've watched and some of the sets I've watched, but I couldn't tell you exactly what his weaknesses are. I, I just have seen the Kung Lao Kung Lao combination and it's really fun to watch. Raiko, I'm gonna put an A plus. And if you talk to me probably last week or something, I would put him in B or maybe low A. Uh, no, he gets insane damage and now that we know more about his grappling style, I think he can excel. If you've seen any of Rewind's gameplay with Raikou, it's nuts. He can be really good. He can punish up blocks with like 67% combos, which is just wild. I think though, him and Havoc are the A-plus characters that take a whole lot of work, and they take you having a strong understanding of the character. When you first pick them up, you are actually going to struggle a lot and think the character is not very good. But in time, I bet you these two characters rise to solid A+. Right now, I'd say they're both low A+. Yeah, we'll just go ahead and talk about Havoc then. Havoc is the weirdest character to fight against and to play I have ever seen. I think people in the first few days of the game were a little too focused on getting those moves where it's essentially unblockable. But now that I see Havoc's actually taking their time and using all the other strings, uh, this character is a menace. Yeah, he, he has really good frame traps with a lot of things. Some people would probably put him lower, uh, but currently in an online setting. This isn't offline, this is online combat league. I think this character's A. I just think he's misunderstood, but he has great pressure. You know, he can keep himself safe. He gets extra health. And when he gets the right conversion going, all of a sudden you're losing 50% of your health. Next in A+, I am putting Sindel. Cameo Drain is absolutely nuts. On top of that, Sindel has mix-ups in her strings. She gets an overhead starter. She has nuts air pressure when she's floating in the air. Yeah, it's just wild. Like she has low overhead, low, low. It, if, yeah, she just has mix-ups all over the place. Nuts damage. And she's just constantly pressuring you. I think they did Sindel really well in this game. Uh, I, I see no complaints, honestly. I don't see a lot of other people complaining. On top of that, Sindel's forward four cartwheel kick move, that move seems to just stop you from using wake up armor. Anytime I try an armored wake up against that, Sindel doesn't even need to block. Just use forward four, and because it hits twice so quickly, it just breaks the armor and she can keep going. So she probably has the best meaties in the game currently with that alone, which can make her really frustrating to play against, especially when you're cornered. Sindel just doesn't have to block. She can keep going for the forward four, make you waste that bar of meter, and then convert into it for a full combo. All right, also in A+, we have Scorpion. Scorpion without Cyrax or Jax is B for sure. He's exactly the same as Nataro without Cyrax or Jax. He doesn't have a lot of strings, he doesn't have a good mid, he has no mix-ups, and his only strength to the character is having a lot of damage. Now, Cyrax changes that, and if you haven't seen it yet, 
let me show you. So, Scorpion has the best chip damage in the game, and honestly, he is A plus for sure with the Cyrax stuff. He just might be one of the most frustrating characters to play against and one of the most boring characters to play. Your whole game plan is to keep doing stuff like this with Scorpion. You go into that, cancel into spin, cancel into Cyrax. That right there did 10% ship damage. Now, if you time it right, it's actually still Scorpion's turn. So you'll have a lot of characters like Johnny Cage try and reversal kick you. You just sit there and block and then you get your full combo punish on them. But say you have both Cyrax usages, you can do stuff like this. That did 20% chip damage. 20 whole percent. And it's like, even if you're not confirming into everything every time, even if you just do this and the spin hits, you're gonna do like 13, 14% damage. And then it's still your turn. So you can walk up, they might block if they have no meter and you just do this. It's really oppressive. It's the current meta with Scorpion outside of going for the 100% Jax combo. I think I was playing one time and I hit somebody like this. So I went like that into a Cyrax, like this, into a Cyrax, dash up, grab. And this in total did 31.5% damage. <laughs> and I didn't even land a normal hit. So yeah, Scorpion's A plus with this and the 100% Jax combo. Other than that, he's B. Both of those got changed by Netherrealm. He'd be maybe A, but I think B. Because yeah, he does have some options to combo off the low with Sector or the ground flames with Motaro. And to round out our A plus tier, we have Rain. Rain is really good, but really complicated. And I don't think any player has fully discovered the best things to do with him. I just think he's really tricky and I don't know, he's definitely the weirdest one to put in a tier list. He's probably the one I'll talk the least about, but his portal setups are nuts. And if you didn't know, if you like walk in between the portals where they are, you get hit as the opponent. Uh, there's just crazy setups you can do. He gets decent to good damage. He has good normal range. I'm putting him in A plus now because I think he'll stay upper tier. And then also I saw Sonic Fox said Rain's better than originally thought. And I agree. I already would have put Rain A plus from the clips and sets I've seen. But who knows? Rain could turn out to be a top three character. I don't think he goes down the tier list at all. I think he stands to reach S tier. So I think A plus, great place to put him. Now to enter my S tier picks. My first S tier pick is Melina. Melina gets insane damage. She has mix-ups. Is it her stand two and forward one maybe that look almost identical, but one of them has an overhead second hit? I get hit by that all the time and I've seen other people complain about it as well. She has a bunch of mix-ups all over in her strings. She has fast buttons, great damage. Uh, she can confirm with two bars from, you know, straight Psy and turn that into like 45, 50%. She's also just a really fun character to play. And she's really good with Goro, which also moves her up the tier list for me. She's S. I think currently she's the second best female character in the game for sure. Yeah, she's just really good. I recommend if you like Melina, uh, go watch some gameplay of her because, yeah, she's just a wild character. Oh, and Melina with all that, you know, being pretty safe, fast strings, good mix-ups in the strings, great damage. She has that slight touch of YOLO that Melina has always had with ball roll, teleport, Stuff like that. She gets the low sigh again. Low sigh is one of the best projectiles in Netherrealm history. So yeah, Melina's can make you think, oh, she's playing super disciplined. And then all of a sudden she wins the round with a 40% YOLO combo. And that hurts the soul. There is no greater pain than when Melina does something like that to you. Next in S, I have Gearus. Uh, Gearus is an interesting character. He's actually one of the hardest characters to learn in the entire game. He just has a lot of stuff. I mean... He obviously gets a whole bunch of damage and it feels like when I'm playing against him, I can never tell what's coming. He's also hard to punish. Some of his strings that are flawless block punishable only come out on hit. So I don't even know why in the move list, it says it's punishable if you flawless block. If you block the string, it's not going to happen. He plays well with a variety of cameos. He's just really solid all around. I would say the only thing keeping him from top five is sometimes you have to work a little too hard to build up, I don't know what you want to call them, like little time lamps. But no, definitely a top seven character. I'm putting Gearus solidly in S. Great normals, great amount of damage, great special moves. Can't really go wrong with him. I don't think he's top five, but you can't go wrong with him. All right, now we enter my top five and my top five looks exactly like Sonic Fox, but I want to talk about it. If you have not played a good Ashra yet, 
you are in for a world of hurt when you do. Astra's like projectile, that's that light beam that goes up in front of you, is super plus. And then her stand 2-1, I think it is, is that string where she has insane normal range and it leads to like this pop-up. It doesn't look like a pop-up because the opponent just slowly falls backwards, but it is a launch. When you start hitting the opponent, the character will pick up off the ground. So that pressure into the combos is nuts. Essentially, Ashra can sit there just making you grind to get in on her because she's always plus. And if you dare hit a button on her, her normal range is so far after those plus frames, it feels like you should be able to do something. Hit your cameo button, anything. No, you get hit for a whole 35-40% combo. On top of that, she has cancels, so she can get in on any of your projectiles, cancel right in front of your face. She doesn't have to full commit. She gets elongated strings and extra damage essentially with the, you know, getting hits in the dark mode, but most of the dark mode moves are the same as the light mode. I just think Ashra is the best character in the game at playing you really spaced. Like, she can keep you out, and then just make you work for it. Because again, because again, she'll just keep throwing that plus projectile at you and she can recover and do it again super quickly. So you're just gonna have to figure out another way in on her. She's definitely top five at the moment. Good damage, probably best plus frames in the game, mixed with some of the longest normals in the game that lead to full combos. I'm putting her in top five. She's just hard to learn. I've taken her into training mode a whole bunch of times at this point because there's a few really good Xbox Ashras that are in the top 100 that basically make it so you can't play half the cast. That's another thing. Ashra has some of the best matchups in the game. Baraka is also up here in the top five because I haven't talked about him yet. But if you're playing Baraka, Ashra crushes Baraka. He, the, I guess all you can do with Baraka is hope to sit back and throw your projectile. That's like Ashra's only weakness. She doesn't have a full screen projectile. Problem is, if Ashra just gets tired of that, she can cancel right through it all. Next up, I got Raiden. Uh, Raiden all about the damage with mix-ups. So he has a overhead low mix-up, both of which lead to 50% damage. Uh, there's not really much more you can say about him. He just gets easy ways to open you up for the most damage in the game for those openings. Aside from maybe Baraka Cyrax, yeah, Raiden gets the most damage for these overhead low 50-50 mix-ups in the entire game. And although Baraka gets slightly more damage, Raiden's actual overhead and low buttons are better than Baraka's. So yeah, he's just a really basic top five pick because he just has to open you up twice with a dirty mix up and the round's already over. Uh, he also has cameos that lead to a triple setup in a row where you're truly in a vortex. You have to guess three times in a row and he can end you that way as well. Just resetting you, going for a 50-50. If you guess wrong, see you later, 35% of your life, and he'll set you right back into that same situation again. Next up, we have Johnny Cage. Johnny Cage, definitely top three in the game right now. Seeing on Twitter and stuff like that, that he is probably the best Kenshi counter. He also counters Scorpion very well, so if you're a Scorpion main, you're gonna hate fighting against Johnny because Johnny can punish your low sweeping move, your ground flames, your spear, pretty much everything but Shadow Kick. Johnny's parry is nuts against most moves in the game, on top of already having insane mix-up, and 50% combos all over the place. I don't need to talk too much about Johnny because we saw him in the beta, but yeah, he is top three in the game right now. He's a very good pick. He's a little harder to learn than somebody like Raiden or Baraka, but if you do learn him, he'll actually cover that weakness against Kenshi pretty well, so I recommend him. Now, I'm actually putting Baraka as the best character in the game for somebody that is intermediate level at this game, and even beginner to a sense. Baraka gets like 55% combos for one bar and one Cyrax bend, has overhead low mix, he has plus frames on his stand two and his stand three. He can just straight up cancel into his combo starter every single time if he has Cyrax, because Cyrax can keep him safe at the end of it. So there's literally no risk if you go for low into the combo starter, because you have to hit confirm after one hit which can be really challenging for most players. But if you have a way to keep yourself safe, it's a riskless commit low hit into a combo starter. All right, I'm just gonna show you guys some good Baraka sauce. So here's two combos you can do with one bar of meter and a Cyrax cameo. It's nuts because yeah, he also gets the mix-ups, good strike throw, he gets a full projectile. He has almost everything. I didn't even do it right, that was only 48%. But yeah, if I hit it a little bit different timing, that would have been 50 to 51%. And there's other combos you can do here in the corner. I turn into even more damage. I'll see if I can do it real quick.
right there. You know what? I, I can't believe I just did that first try. 54%, one bar of meter. So that's even probably easier once you have the timing right. Uh, yeah, this character is nuts. But say you're mid-screen as well. You can still get wild damage. Watch this. Oh, 48% mid-screen, one bar, one cameo. He has some of the most damage in the entire game with mix-ups again, with mix-ups and plus frames and a projectile and good strike throw because stand two is plus one on block. Here's what I mean if you just raw commit into the launcher every time, you're safe. Yeah, you don't even have to hit confirm. So if I go for this low starter right here and I, it doesn't hit, I just call in Cyrax and keep myself safe. Yeah, the character's pretty cheap, don't get me wrong. Same with this right here. So Braca is S plus tier, of course, top five in the game, but I'm putting him in his own top one for beginner and intermediate level players to win with. Because we're about to get to Kenshi, a lot of beginner and intermediate level players aren't gonna be able to grasp or you know get the inputs correct for Kenshi. So if you want a cheap character that you could play at any level of skill and get better with, Baraka's probably the number one character in the game. That or Raiden. It could be between the two of them. Lastly, Kenshi. Oh boy. Kenshi's cheap. Uh, Kenshi plays his own game. Sento stance needs to be toned down. It can stay out for 16 seconds, do 45% combos into resets with triple mix-ups, uh, include that with cameos that he can somehow use as well. It's just... This character is super broken. Uh, Kenshi will probably win the first major of MK1, which is fine. I'm not calling for nerfs yet, but I do hope after he inevitably wins the first offline major tournament, I hope he gets changed. Uh, he's not fun to fight against. You spend the whole round 30 seconds wise just blocking and just hoping you don't get hit. Because again, he has endless pressure, endless resets into more mix after doing like 45%. If he was getting like 25% into more mix, that's one thing. But no, he's getting more damage than half the cast can get into a 25-30% combo into another reset. It just never ends with this character. He's really, really good. I don't think outside of like the top 1000, you're going to see very many Kenshis that can play the way Kenshi can be played. So if you do ever reach like the top 1000 in Combat League, I recommend you learn the cameo Shujinko. That's because when you copy Kenshi's moves, you actually get Sento Stance. So if you could do that and practice a little bit, if you're a higher level player, I definitely recommend you doing that. Yeah, this character is just easily top one. I don't think anybody has any doubts. Uh, I, it's like, I'm not one of those people that loves nerfing. Like I wish you could buff other characters to reach Kenshi's level. The problem is I just can't see a way for hardly any of the cast to be buffed up to Kenshi's level. I think Kenshi just has to take a nerf in some way, shape or form, limit how long Sento Stance can be out or something. If the combo's over like 28%, you won't be in a position to use Sento Stance on the reset into another 50-50 or something like that. So yeah, that's gonna be my tier list. In the future, I'll do a cameo tier list, but again, I'm still trying all the cameos and it's harder because certain cameos work better with certain characters. So you could have like Cyrax, for example, who is absolutely amazing with Scorpion and Baraka, but might suck with rain or something. Thank you guys for watching as usual. I'm doing a clip submissions video for MK1. Uh, I'm probably already gonna have the video made by the time you see this, but if you wanna join the Discord and you know submit for the next one, I'll have a link in the pinned comment. See you guys later, subscribe.